Lake Maxinkaki is a 15,000-year-old kettle lake attributed to the Wisconsin Glacier. Today, water flows into the lake through three major tributaries which we will explore here. The northern leg of this tributary begins at the Ray and Esther Morrison Farm on State Road 17. It heads east and south to join the eastern leg near the intersection of 117 and State Road 10. You can see that this landowner has taken great precautions to keep his buffers at 90 feet or greater on both sides of the ditch, similar to what the Benedict Farm does that we will visit in just a minute. Along most of this ditch area are places that don't come into contact with arable agricultural land but pass through woodlands. The eastern headwaters of the Wilson begins on the Benedict Farm. The Benedict family has been close collaborators with the Environmental Council for decades. Their commitment can easily be seen on how they manage their 100-foot wide filter strips along the riparian shores. All of the surface water on this farm is protected by buffers to keep a lake in pristine condition. The water that enters into the surface drains should first pass through a sod waterway or brass buffers to remove as much sediment as possible. The buffer strips keep fertilizer and spray out of the thread of the ditch. We look forward to opportunities to work with landowners to establish additional buffers, adding to their conservation efforts. On the left side of the screen are environmental features established by Culver Academies. They include a French drain system as well as a diking system that helps keep nutrients and sediment from the surface waters of the ditch. We are entering the first constructed wetland in the state of Indiana, known as the Wilson Wetland. It was built on a collaborative effort of the Culver Academies, Lake Maxicucky Environmental Council, and the DNR in the 1980s as a pilot program for the state conservation departments. The first feature we notice is a sediment trap, which is common to all constructed wetlands. What looks like small islands are actually baffles that assist in slowing the water. This is the last treatment of the water before it enters into the lake. From this point on, the water travels through the Academy's bird sanctuary, meandering through woodlands until it meets the northern leg of the drain. The ditch moves slowly through the bird sanctuary, allowing the sediment and nutrients to fall into the ditch as it travels through the woods. At this point, both arms of the Wilson Ditch meet up and flow into the lake through the Academy grounds. The Academy has eliminated fertilizers containing phosphorus from their campus, except for cases of small repair projects since the very early 1990s. The Dale and Kay Schultz Farm is the location of the headwaters of the Curtis. It flows almost directly west towards Lake Maxinkucky. The Lake Maxinkucky Environmental Council worked alongside the Schultzes to configure their farm drainage, helping to prevent nutrients from entering the ditch. The water leaves the Schultz Farm and flows through 160 acres that has been converted to classified wildlife acreage. This owner has created a couple of small wetlands on his property and the Lake Maxinkucky Environmental Council maintains a sediment trap on this site as well. Now we follow the ditch into what was once known as the Baxter Farm, where construction began on the Curtis wetland in 1989. At one time, this was just a standard county drain, a thin straight ditch going immediately west to drain all of the farmland into the lake. This owner has taken almost all of the arable farmland and converted it to wildlife habitat and wetlands, where Lake Maxinkucky Environmental Council is allowed to remain as a steward, maintaining the control structure and combating invasive weeds and other threats. The constructed baffles shown here are in place to restrict the flow of water, allowing sediments to fall out and nutrients to be absorbed.
notice that there is virtually no disturbance of the soil through this entire area, with only the golf course, which has been applying non-phosphorus fertilizer for several years. The golf course maintains a small sediment trap just before the water crosses under the road to catch as much loose sediment as possible. This arm of the Klein is buffered, restricting soil and fertilizer from entering the ditch. All of these buffers have been put in place under the CREP program since roughly 2006. Please remember that almost 1.3 billion gallons of rainwater falls in our watershed each year and these wetlands and buffer ditches carry over 60% of this volume directly into the lake. This is the south arm of the Klein, leaving Fulton County, which is partially buffered as it enters the Mystic Hills Golf Course. Notice the small sediment trap, which is the final treatment for this leg, which was constructed by Lake Maxicucky Environmental Council in 2012. Notice the small sediment trap just as you cross 20B Road just inside the woods, also put in place by Lake Maxinkaki Environmental Council around 1993. This is where the Klein Ditch enters the DNR-owned Maxinkaki Wetland and Conservation Area, known locally as the Klein Wetland. Water levels are low in this wetland when filming took place as repairs to the levee were delayed by heavy spring rains. Note the spillway and control structure, which can be seen here. The public enjoys the use of this wetland for hunting, fishing, and bird watching year round. Along with being the largest wetland of the three, it is also known for having some of the greatest plant and animal diversity. The levee is made of organic soils, which tend to sink and oxidize over time. Maintenance on the levee has been ongoing since shortly after its construction. Lake Maxicaki Environmental Council will continue to monitor and repair this important fragile structure. Thirty-seven inches of rain typically falls on the lake and watershed each year. The managed wetlands that we have just visited are essentially the kidneys of the lake, removing sediment and nutrients before they enter the lake's water column. Lake Maxinkaki has only one outlet structure which controls the legal level of the lake. The Indiana courts gave Lake Maxinkaki Environmental Council control of this outlet in 2001. This outlet and natural evaporation are the sole means by which water leaves Lake Maxinkaki. It takes approximately seven years for all of the water within Lake Maxinkaki to be replaced. When our water leaves the outlet, it enters and moves through Lost Lake onto the Tippecanoe River. The water that leaves Lake Maxinkucky is remarkably clean and is an attribute to both Lost Lake and the Tippecanoe watershed. Approximately 15% of the water volume in the lake is replaced by rain surface and subsurface recharge annually. It is essential that a healthy lake has a healthy, sound, and biologically diverse watershed.